Hello you guys and welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah and today I want to test out a new type of video with you. It's called Keep This, Not That. Now this is a little bit of a playoff of, I think it was a book and maybe a website called Eat This, Not That. And that's more so about making healthy switches with foods that we're eating. But I thought the same type of thing might work from a decluttering perspective. With my own decluttering, I found that there are certain items I have that serve multiple purposes. And so if I keep that item that serves multiple purposes, I can then declutter some other related items that were serving similar purposes that I can replace with that one item. Because I'd much rather have one item that serves multiple purposes than all these items that only are useful for one thing. So, that being said, if this is something that you guys like and you'd like this to be a more regular occurrence on the channel, please let me know. For today's video of Keep This Not That, I wanna talk you through four different things that I have found I can use instead of something else and I was able to declutter that other item. The first one's actually where I'm recording this. I did purchase a stool. Recently, Jake and I sold the futon that we had here and it was actually kind of cool. We, we picked it up from the dumpster um, when we moved into this apartment and it was really useful to us for a year and then we decided that we didn't really want it as much anymore. It wasn't super comfy, but we put it on Craigslist for 50 bucks and someone purchased it. So that was really cool. I like this stool in terms of like video making because it's a way that I am still sitting down so it kind of feels more comfortable dialogue perspective, but you're not too comfortable like leaning back at all. I Anyway, I like it for that. It feels like we're just having a nice chat. That being said, I actually found out that this stool can replace another item, which was the nightstand in my bedroom. Now this wasn't really that nice of a nightstand. I'm super appreciative. It was a very simple, piece my grandparents had consolidated from a regular house and a lake house into one house and with that they had a lot of extra furniture so a lot of the stuff that we've gotten has been things that they didn't want anymore um, including these little end tables you might have seen them in past videos we used to keep them all out in our living room in our past apartment that we had and they were fairly low quality it was wood but you screwed in the legs and the legs didn't really stay in so you had to be very careful when you moved it. Anyway, I was using that as my nightstand by the bed. But after I got this and I was thinking I'm not going to store this stool here full time, I found that if I put this next to my bed, not only does it take up less space than the previous nightstand did, but also I really like that because there are the different spots on the side here. I can actually hang my pajamas on there um, when I'm changing today since I, I wear the same pair of pajamas for about a week and then I switch out. It was really nice because then I didn't store those pajamas on the floor anymore. Bad habits, I guess. And it also was able to be used now for two purposes. So because I got this, not only did we get rid of the futon we had here, we also were able to get rid of that little nightstand. Next up for keep this, not that, I actually have this particular bag here. Um, the brand of this is Bagalini. My mom actually brought this when we were traveling together and it was working out really well. But when they were going home, she actually gave uh, this bag to me then so I could use just because I was just realizing that my own purse situation was kind of inadequate compared to this. And she, yeah, she was so generous to give this to me. But what's interesting is, you know, by keeping this, I actually was able to get rid of three other purses that I was rotating between because this is much more all purpose. So I had a really small purse. It was one I had had since 2012. One of the straps had broken, but I was still holding on to it and I had fixed it with some safety pins and glue or whatever. But that purse was really too small. I could carry the basics like a phone and a wallet, but if I wanted to bring a water bottle, it didn't fit. If I wanted to bring more than that, it was always something I had to kind of figure out. So got rid of that purse. I also had a backup purse in reserve that I had gotten that someone else didn't want. It was the same size as that other purse that I had on the trip. And just because I like this so much better, I was able to donate that purse as well. And then I had more of a bag that was reusable shopping size bag, but it was a little bit nicer. That would be more purse-like. But I got rid of that one too because it didn't really hold that much more than this one does. But what I didn't like is it was kind of like a reusable bag, so everything was all just in one pocket and it could be tough to find things. Here, this purse has so many pockets that I know exactly where each thing is. I've got a certain place for it and it just helps because 
I don't know how, even in small purses, it's so hard to find certain things sometimes. And finally, I haven't technically gotten rid of this yet, but I'm going to. I had a larger teacher bag that I would use, and that also just holds way more than you really need to be carrying back and forth between school. I'm going to be decluttering that as well once the school year gets up and running. But just by getting this purse, that means four of the other purses I had, I no longer need anymore. So to apply this to your own life, if you got a type of product that you can get or that you have that can replace the need for other products, that can be an amazing way to declutter because we went from four purses now to one. The next item on Keep This Not That is a really good chef's knife that has a built-in sharpener. So this particular sheath here has a sharpener. So each time you pull it in and out, it is sharpening it. Now, I realized that all the knives we had here were pretty terrible when we were, Jake and I were in a cooking class in Indonesia and their knives were so perfectly sharpened, the food just cut so easily. And I was like, you know, really, I gotta stop this. Yes, there are different products you can purchase that will sharpen knives for you. For instance, this one's not really a knife sharpener, but this can be used like you run the knife along it um, to help prevent it from getting dull. But if we're being honest, I didn't really use it that often. and. Um, you know, this also, you're supposed to still sharpen your knives in a really high quality way, um, even if you're using this. I did look at first to see uh, knife blocks that had built sharpeners, but they were like $300, $400, and I did not want to fork over that kind of money. But I believe I was able to get this with a sharpener for around, I think, $20. I purchased it at Bed Bath & Beyond, so I also had a 20% off coupon that I was able to use. With this, by just having a really sharp knife that works well, not only am I able to get rid of other knives that are no longer working very well, also I can get rid of this thing. But also there's a lot of other kitchen tools that we have like little choppers and gadgets, but if we have a really sharp knife that works well, we don't need any of that. And then you can just have one item you're keeping instead of all of these other items. So for you, maybe you want to invest in a knife that can be really sharp like this or easily sharpened and be able to let go of some other items that aren't as useful. And then my final item today for keep this not that is this bottle of vinegar. Um, now there's nothing special about this particular bottle of vinegar compared to other types, but what is amazing is that for cleaning products, if we keep vinegar and maybe get one or two of those little spray bottles, um, you can either just buy empty ones or if you've used up a spray bottle for something else, you can use that. You can actually make your own cleaning products, that great all-purpose cleaner, using different parts of vinegar and water. Now what's very interesting in the US is that there are probably hundreds of different cleaning products on the market, but so many of them are very toxic and can make our living spaces actually kind of unsafe in terms of some of the ingredients that we're exposed to. And in reality, cleaning with vinegar and water, for instance, can do just as an effective job in a much safer and more affordable way. Because I think it's so interesting how some of us maybe have huge assortments of these toxic cleaning products and each one has a very specific purpose when instead you could just have one item and adjust the ratio for whatever your cleaning job is and it would work just fine. Now, I'm not one who's got all of the epic cleaning product ratios and recipes. I don't really post videos about cleaning just because I don't really like cleaning that much. And you know, there are times where I definitely don't clean as much as I should be or as often as I should be. But I do find that using this works really well. If you're interested, I will link a couple um, videos below that show some different breakdowns. But it's amazing how just basic ingredients like vinegar can work instead of all those other cleaning products. So this can be a great way obviously to save a lot of money to live much more simply because you don't have to have as many products, but also just for safety too, not to have a lot of these very dangerous chemical compounds that are in your space and, you know, sort of making your space more toxic. Also, if you don't really like the smell of vinegar, you can definitely add a couple drops of your favorite essential oil in the mix with the cleaning product. So for example, when I was using this to clean the shower, um, a mix of this and water, I added a couple drops of eucalyptus essential oil and it smelled amazing for multiple showers to come right after that in a completely non-toxic natural way. 
So that being said, that's my first episode of Keep This, Not That. Please let me know your feedback just because if this is something you like, I am happy to make a more regular occurrence on the channel. If you want to check out any past videos, you can do that over here or feel free to subscribe right up here. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.